plenty of motorbikes out here today. You can see. So here we are, and we passed the Nundal turn off. Can't remember. Anyway, we've, oh, we we passed um, the the Dungown pub. Heading towards the Port Stephens cutting. Now the girl girl's been running like a pig. So I stopped just back there. And uh Thought I'd check a few things out. There's a big bull. So I pulled one of the plugs out. Seems okay. Uh, made sure all the connections. We're okay from the coil of the pipes, that kind of stuff. Didn't make any difference, so I um, I um, pulled the points cover off. And there's a man with his dogs. Six days to Volca. Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, the points were completely closed up. I don't know how it was running on one cylinder. I don't know how it was running at all, but I've got no fuel gauges or anything with me, so I just basically just, you know, moved the backing plate slightly to open them up a bit. And it seems I've got it running back on two cylinders again. So, that's something. And here we are basically riding along the Peel, Peel River Valley floor. And we just stopped and saw Stuart Harland at Yellowmore there, haven't seen him for a while. Three dogs, hello! Two dogs, three dogs, more dogs everywhere. Hi oh, Stuart. Alright. Just passing, thought I'd drop in. No, no, I'm just going to a thing at Walker. Um, I just thought I'd take a shortcut, you know. <laughs> Good. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we ride along the valley floor, heading towards Port Stephen's Cutting, as said. Fairly 
these that are grown in a drizzly manner, up at home anyway. Quite often this is the case. Quite often it'll be drizzly or, or grey in, in Gaia and nowhere else, you know. Anyway, as I said, we're going to Walker. We're taking the long way to Walker. And uh, we'll get there eventually and have a night, have some food, have some beers. See the other blokes on their bikes. I don't know who's coming. It's an annual event. I oh, know Andrew will be there. I don't know. Rick Bailey and the trio will be there, I had a get I guess, and Rick's mate John. They're all um I saw them ride past my place this morning. I wasn't gonna ride with them because I thought uh, you know I'll just um take the time by myself, you know.
gonna do this and I was gonna do that make this video and make that video and I think the problem with this external mic at this point is that it's a that the GoPros don't work well with stereo mics and adapters and uh, so and that's where all that crackling comes from there's about 9,000 different theories on you know the internet as it were um, where I've tried different things with the settings and whatnot and, um, and still I haven't got rid of it and I assume that we're going to have the same problem today at speed at least but I didn't have time to find, try and find myself a mono mic set up with this helmet so we're just going to put up with it for now and I didn't want to not document this ride at all because it's only a once a year ride up through the valley, along the valley
classics. Once again, I find myself lucky enough to be riding my brother's bike on a very nice day, mate. <laughs> Which side of the road would you like to be on? Not oh, fucking all of them. Um, sorry. Once again, I find myself lucky enough to be riding my brother's bike on a lovely bit of road with not much traffic trying to kill me. On a Saturday afternoon and one of the things about this ride which is a bit like going to Mark's place in the respect that there'll be beer at the end of it this can only be a good thing Looks like a bit of a, a bit of a posh property. This one, nice new sheds. Traffic hazard. We better take notice of that on this up curl. Good dogs. <laughs> Here we are, pretty much at the bottom of the poor Stephen's cutting. And there's plenty of water in the creek, I mean it's not flooding or anything. Five kilometres narrow winding road, that'd be about right. Reduce speed to conditions. And you'll see why. There's 
actually a bit rough too today. So we'll just take our time of going up here today. As we would anyway. So I have <laughs> I took my mate Errol up here one day on the triumph, you know, he was in the sidecar, he was drinking long necks of Coopers. As we're going up and he's going, ah, it's fucking brilliant, you know. Because he's mad. Do I mean that's not necessary, you know, it's not that narrow. You can stay within your own lane. But I oh, know. People are just oblivious, you know, so oh, no, no, there'll be there'll be no one else coming. Anyway, yeah, we're sort of going up here on the Rocket 3. And he's in the sidecar. As I said, drinking long necks of Coopers and uh, getting pretty pissed, I suppose. He didn't have to worry about driving, sort of thing, and he was at my place for a visit. I've known Errol since I was uh, 11, and uh, and uh, anyway, so unlike the the Harley, you know the the Triumph's got quite a bit of bottom end and a lot more horsepower, you know. And, um, so we're going up here and Errol's like, well, I'll give her a bit of stick, you know. We're not here for a haircut or something, you know, so. So, you know, around some of the, the first gear corners, left-handers and stuff. And then we get the buddy, get the thing power sliding pretty easy, you know, and, and uh, into the hole in that bit of road there. He thought it was brilliant, you know, having the time of his life. <laughs> and the old Trumpy's getting, you know, I'm getting it sort of, I won't say opposite lock, you know, but certainly getting it sideways. And um, that was a fun ride. But we won't be doing that on this thing. When we get to these corners, you know. You could have it. You could have. It. Well, you know, you have a bit of fun on like an old, an old Trumpy, you know, like a nice old two one forty or something, because they're short wheelbase. You know, you can throw them around. Wouldn't be a whole lot of fun on a bike with a long wheelbase. You could feel the front end and just then, just wanting to sort of chatter and skip a bit. more fun going up than down with a sidecar anyway.
adventure rider. Well, at least he's taken it somewhere. <laughs> it's not exactly off road, but, but you know, um, there are plenty of roads, plenty of dirt roads once you get up the top here. that way one to the, on that ride and did about I don't know 50 60 or so k's of dirt and eventually ended up going through Niangla which is where Casey Stoner came from or at least was there for a while or something like that I'm not entirely sure It's actually quite warm here. I, I could almost take my jumper off. smooth tire on this corner you could probably commit to this corner on a solo bike going in you go that's the way Pulling very well now. We're gonna have to, you know, obviously do the points properly. It's just, you know, I've got nothing to compare it with at the moment.
got a little bit of everything in this road once you buy it by the time you get to the end you know, the valley floor open stretches tight twisties rough patches shaded areas cars on the wrong side of the road that sort of thing The thing I was saying before about it being quite warm, well it's cooled off a bit now because now we're getting up towards the top of the ranges. I'm not sure how, how high you'd be here, probably a thousand metres. Solid. That's for sure.
think it or not. video here with the other camera.